Welcome back to Business Office Specialist. In today's video we're going to be looking at tools we can use for proofreading our documents. To help us with that we're going to copy a document into our Google Drive called Typoglycemia. As with all of our other assignments, the copy link for this document is either in Canvas or in the description at the bottom of the YouTube video. Now I've already copied this document into my Google Drive, renamed it, and moved it to my boss folder. If you need help with these steps, you can go back and look at our YouTube video on navigating Google Drive, and it will explain these steps in greater detail for you. Once you have it copied in, into your drive and moved to your boss folder, let's open up Typoglycemia, and you'll see that this gives us a paragraph with a lot of errors in it that we're going to need to correct. Hopefully as you're proofreading your own homework assignments, they're not as bad as this one. But this gives us a great playground for us to play around with the tools and get used to them. So you can tell that a document has errors often because of the squiggles that show up at the bottom of the words. So any word that has a red squiggle underneath it indicates that that word is misspelled. And there are a lot of misspelled words in this document. There's also some blue squiggles that indicate grammar mistakes, and we'll want to correct those too. So probably the best place to start with this document, and where I'd recommend st starting anytime you're proofreading, is with the spelling and grammar check tool that's built into Google Docs. There are several different ways that you can access this spelling and grammar checking tool. One way is simply to click on the misspelled word. So for example, if I click on this word right here, it will bring up a small pop-up that recommends the correct word. This should have been terrible, but it was terribly misspelled. So if I click on the word terrible, it will automatically change the spelling for me, and now this word is spelled correctly. So if you only have a few words that are wrong, only a few squiggles on your page, then that's a really fast way to do it. But if you have a lot of corrections that need to be made, like this document, or you have a really long document to go through, an alternative way to do it is to open up the tool itself. You can do that by either clicking on its icon on the ribbon, which is an icon that looks like the letter A with a check mark underneath it. It's right here on the left-hand side of the ribbon. Or by pressing the shortcut key, which is F7 at the top of your keyboard. So I'm going to click the spelling and grammar checking tool. And you'll notice that it doesn't start at the beginning of the document. It actually starts wherever your mouse was. So it began at the word terrible and started moving forward to the next misspelled word. And the next misspelled word here looks like it's sleeping, but it's not supposed to be sleeping. It's actually supposed to be spelling. But the word is so mis uh, mixed up that the spelling and grammar check tool couldn't figure out which word it was and guessed wrong. Now with other word processing systems like Microsoft Word, it will give you multiple possible answers and then you choose from which one is correct. With the Google Doc spelling and grammar checker, it only gives you the most recommended word. So a lot of students will try and rush through this assignment by clicking accept a lot of times to accept all of the spelling and grammar uh, corrections. The tool inside of Google Docs is really smart and usually it can get the word right. But sometimes, like with spelling here, it doesn't. So you want to always check the words carefully to make sure it is the word you want it to be before you click up accept. If you just drill through this really fast, pounding the accept button, there are a few words in here, like spelling, that may not come up right, and you will end up using the wrong word, and it will change completely the meaning of your sentence. I am terrible at spelling is very different than I am terrible at sleeping. So we want to make sure the right message gets across. So with this one, because it's not sleeping, I can't actually use the spelling and grammar checker to fix it. There's no alternative word for me here. So instead what I'm going to do is double click the word to highlight the entire word and then I'm going to have to correct it myself. And like I said, there's a few words in this paragraph you will probably have to do that on. All right, so now that I've done that one right, I'm actually going to back up and move forward again. And now it moves me to the next word, which is paragraph. That is the right word, so I can click accept. I can click accept on misplaced, 
or misspelled, sorry. Ooh, I even got it wrong. Uh, purpose, Cambridge, University. So you can move through these. And again, you can move through fairly quickly. Just make sure that you're double checking them. Like this one, it couldn't figure out what research was. It was too scrambled. So I'm going to double click that and do research. And you'll notice that now studies pops up with a blue underline because it is grammatically incorrect. Cambridge University did a research studies. It's a research, so it's singular, but this word is plural and it should not be. So if I back up and take a look at that again, it recommends study as the recommended option. So what I'd like you to do is move through this entire document and practice using the spelling and grammar checker to correct each of the misspelled words and correct all of the grammar mistakes. When you're finished, there should not be any blue or red underlined words. Now you may sometimes run across words that may say they're misspelled when they're really not. Oftentimes I'll see students with certain names that are spelled uniquely and aren't recognized by the spell checker and it's kind of annoying that they always show up in red. There is a way to fix that as well. Your Google account has a private dictionary where you can add words that you use often. So if you go down to the three bullets on the side of the, word, of the accept button, there is an add to dictionary option right here. Now I'm not going to do that because this word is misspelled and I don't want to say covered added to my dictionary. But if you have like your name or a word that you're using when you type that needs to be added to the dictionary, you can do that there. All right, so I'm going to close the spelling and grammar checker for now. I'll let you go ahead and move through the document and clean up all of the squiggles on your own. There is one other tool, a uh, couple other tools that I wanted to point out to you as well. One of the cool features of Google Docs is that it does have a dictionary built into it as well. So if I wanted to know what a certain word meant, I could click on that word, like I'm going to come back here to terrible, and then if you right click on the word, you will get a right click menu and on that right click menu, there is an option to define. There's also a shortcut key, control shift Y. But I'm going to click define terrible and off to the side, it's going to pop up a dictionary for me. And it tells me the definition for the word, but more important than that, it gives me synonyms. I love using the synonyms because sometimes if I'm writing a long document, I use a word too many times and it starts to sound boring and I want a different word to describe the same thing. Or sometimes I'm looking for a specific word, but I can't quite remember what it is. And the synonyms can really be helpful. And the cool thing about the Google Docs version of the dictionary is if I am interested in a specific word, in the synonyms and I want to see if it's similar enough that I can use it, I can click on that word and it will take me to that word's definition as well and some synonyms for that one. And then I can back up if I want to. So that's a really handy tool to have. So we can look here and see that terrible could also mean dreadful, awful, appalling. What I found interesting is it even could mean pants. Whoever thought. But in the British English, so in uh, England or the United Kingdom, they use the slang term pants to describe anything that's terrible, awful, or horrible. So if it's really rainy and, and dreary outside and you think that the weather is miserable, you could say that the weather outside today is pants. So there you go. You learned a new slang term that you can use with your friends and they'll all look at you and think you're weird. Uh, but that is the dictionary and the uh, synonyms that are available. The other tool that I want to show you is the find and replace tool. Find and replace is super handy when you're trying to replace several words in a document all at once. This is used a lot in the business world because we use a lot of template forms. So for example, here at our school, I share a lot of forms for my clubs and my classes with TimFew. But I don't want TimFew's name to show up on it, so I can find all of the words uh, TimFew throughout the document and replace them with Provo High so that they become my documents. So that's a cool feature that you can use uh, that I want to make sure we practice today as well. You can find the find and replace tool either in the edit menu at the very bottom or by using the shortcut control H. So I'm going to open find and replace. And since we just learned about the synonyms for terrible, let's replace terrible with one of its synonyms dreadful. 
So in the first box where it says find, I want to type in the word that I want to replace. So I want to replace the word terrible. And then replace with is going to describe what word I want to replace it with. I want to replace it with dreadful. Now there are several different options in here. Most of the time we want to leave the default, so we don't usually want to match case. That means that if it's capitalized instead of lowercase, it will skip it. It has to be exactly the same case. So there are those options there. Like I said, most of the time we'll leave them as defaults. For today's activity, we'll leave all of the default settings. Now if I click replace, it will replace just the first one it finds. If I say replace all, it will search the entire document and replace all of them immediately. If I want to see which ones I want to replace, you can click next and previous and it won't replace them, but it will move you to the next one it finds. For today's activity, I'm going to have you replace all on each of them. So any words that it finds in the document, it will replace them with the words that are indicated. So let's go ahead and replace all of our terribles with dreadfuls. And then close that and we can see that now terrible in our first line of the paragraph is replaced with that dreadful automatically. So that's one of the handy features as well. So as a quick review, the three tools we've talked about today is the spelling and grammar checker, which can be accessed either by clicking on a word with squiggles underneath it, or pressing F7 as a shortcut, or finding its icon on the ribbon. We also talked about the dictionary, which you can get from the right-click menu, where it says define, and there are synonyms in there as well. And we also learned how to use find and replace, which is either in the edit menu at the bottom or with the shortcut control H. To learn more tools and features in the Google Suite family of apps, check out more of my videos on YouTube or visit torynorman.com.